Okay, we were talking about magnetos, and we left off, what, yesterday with Operation. Good games. Good games. Did bother anybody else if the little patient's eyes are wide open? Okay, we are up to and talking about the primary circuit. Primary circuit. Well, yesterday we talked about the... Magnetic circuit. Now we're going to talk about the primary circuit. Primary circuit contains. Well, I guess we could back up. We could say, well, what does the magnetic circuit contain? Uh, <coughs> permanent <coughs> rotating <coughs> magnet. <coughs> pull shoes. Pull shoes. Pull shoes. Extensions. Extensions. Soft iron core. All right. So primary circuit contains the primary winding. Primary winding. Uh, let me think. Where is the primary winding? And the coil around the soft iron core. Okay. Contained. It is contained within the coil assembly. Contained in the coil assembly. Whenever you see something like assembly, it's to indicate there's several parts involved with it. And the primary winding has relatively. relatively few turns of insulated copper wire. Copper wire. Just because I'm now on camera doesn't mean I'm going to write any nicer, unfortunately. If I could, so now I would. They, all get to see our pain. they get to see what? Our pain. Your pain? Yeah, we're trying to read your pain, right? No, you could see it before. <laughs> Nothing's changed. <laughs> They can see me writing it. You can see if I change my shirt every day, if I get a haircut. Uh, my little wire I have around here, is that insulated wire or not insulated? Not insulated. Oh, does it have a little coating on it? It is insulated. It is, in fact, insulated. It's got a little coating on it. Otherwise, it would just kind of short itself out and would be like two lumps of wire on there. So just. It has, it has a coating on there. So, uh, Okay, so it has relatively, relatively, which means in relation to the secondary winding, few turns of insulated copper wire. About how many turns does your book say that it has for a magneto? 232. I believe the answer is 200, about 200 turns. All right, well, what else we have in there? The breaker points? No, don't you be shy because I'm on camera. Everybody's quiet now. Brett? I don't want to say anything because there's a camera up. Also called. Also called what? Okay, con points or <laughs> contact assembly. Con also called contact assembly or points. Uh, let's see. Points open and close. Points. Points are opened and closed by what? By the cam. By the cam. cam shaft or just cam? Just the cam. Cam lobes on the in in the magneto. Um, what is the job of the points? What is their primary function? Okay. Its job is to go ahead. I hear it. What's that, Mark? Okay. Its job is to open and close the primary circuit. Its job is to open and close the primary circuit. Points are not necessarily closed by the cam. Okay, you are correct. It does not pull them closed. It has a spring built in there that has to close it. Yeah. So since we're on that subject, what happens if that little spring starts to get weak? It won't close and complete the uh, magnetic or the electric circuit. Um, possibly. Or possibly. Closes fast. Or won't it just shatter? From okay, so what happens is the cam is going around and it's it's going around pretty fast. 
right? And so the, uh, the points have a little plastic piece on there that have to follow it going back and forth. And so it depends on that spring to push the cam follower onto the cam and hold it tight on there so that it actually follows the cam. But if that spring becomes weak, like it got overheated and lost its temper and became weak, then when the cam comes around, it can actually start bouncing it. So it's what you call, they start floating and they don't follow it. So how does that cause the airplane, like how does the airplane engine react to that? Oh, horribly bad. <laughs> it doesn't, yeah. It's the points aren't opening and closing when they're supposed to be. So you have like misfiring. Misfiring, yeah, bouncing around. Yeah, they, they kind of bounce in there. So it's going to throw the timing all off. Uh, job is to open and close the primary circuit. Oh, what else I got to say here? Uh, ooh, we haven't talked about this. P lead. The P lead is connected to the points. What is the P lead? Is what? There you go, it grounds the magneto. It's the wire that comes out of the magneto. More stuff on it. It's the wire that's gonna come out of the case. We don't have the case here, but it's gonna come out of the case. Huh? <laughs> Tim's like, you gotta show the camera. I don't. <laughs> Standing here, you can see it. Right. It's just us watching this anyway. <laughs> Not like there's some audience out there. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> okay, so the P lead is actually the wire that comes out of here that goes to the ignition switch. What's special about the P lead? What kind of wire is it? Shielded wire. So, yeah. so main ground comes to magneto by the connecting the, to the engine, right? Uh, well, it actually goes, the P lead is connected to the back of the points uh -huh. and where the capacitor touches, and that goes to an ignition switch, and the ignition switch is then grounded in the ignition switch to the airframe. Yeah, but the magneto connects to the engine. It's yes, the, it's so the, it, ground it's ground is right through here. Yeah. Uh, five. Other, other, other parts. This sounds funny. Other parts on points, on breaker points. Breaker points. What are some other parts on there? Um, strip. All right, got the felt strip. We can do it in my order though, so I don't get messed up. Cam follower. That's a little plastic part that is going to rub against the camshaft. Now, if it's plastic, let's think about what happens. Is it going to wear? Yes. yes. All right. So as that cam follower wears, we've set, and, and we've talked about, we're going to set the points to open at E-gap. E-gap is defined as what? The number of degrees past neutral at which the breaker points open. Okay, points open. So. Let's uh, think about the fact that the cam doesn't wear, because it's made out of steel, but the little plastic part that's riding on it starts to wear. So as the cam lobe comes around to open up the points, and it's oblong, so yeah, I can draw an oblong circle, and we have kind of the little follower that's riding on there, which is gonna, um, oops, which will open the points, we'll make them go that way. So it's going to open the points. As this thing starts to wear, the points are going to points points uh, will open early or late later. Okay, open late. Hey, it sounds kind of like a Taco Bell. <laughs> uh, points will open late and close. Really. And that is going to mess up your timing. So if I had it set, so they're supposed to open at 10 degrees and it opens late, it's going to open. 11, 12, okay, 11, 12, 13. But if I put the magneto together and I timed it to be at 10 degrees for my E-gap, and then I put it on the airplane engine and I rotate this so that um, this fires 
at exactly 25 degrees before top dead center of the engine, and then the cam follower starts to wear, and the points start opening later, what's that going to do to the timing from this to the engine? Also later. And if that happens later, I'm going to have an increase or decrease in power. Decrease. 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 Not something I really want. So that's why I check timing every year. Uh, so we have the cam follower. We have a uh, felt strip. What's the purpose of the felt strip? Lubricate. Okay, lubricate. How do you know if it's lubricated enough? <laughs> little squeeze, feel some oil, you're good to go. Um, well, of course, we've got the contact points. I don't know if I get into this later, so I'll mention it now. How do you clean the contact points, that, that little spot between there? You put a piece of sandpaper in there and no, hold no, it no, over no, and just no, go no, back no, and forth. No, no, no. Sure. Uh, That's even out the other side. <laughs> a file? No, no, no. no. Business card. Okay, a business card, a yeah. white business card. And what do you do with the business yeah, card? Just, you, just like you actually card. open it up, put the business card in, close it, open it, pull it out. Yeah. You don't even put it in and yank it out. You got to open it back up. So you just close it on the business card, open it on the business card, you're done. That's all you're supposed to do. It doesn't seem very efficient, though. It doesn't. Uh, but especially in, in these, they don't get oily, really. It's they're pretty. Yeah, but what about like carbon build or build up? That's what they want you to do. For. Well, I've no, he, points that are pretty yeah, you, the points get kind of nasty in there. You're supposed to change them out at that point. Uh, contact points. And, okay, we have the spring, which I talked about. That keeps, it actually closes the points. All right, I didn't roll too far, did I? All right, what else we got in there in the primary circuit? Good, condenser, way to go. You guys are right on it. Condenser, uh, also called capacitor, also called a capacitor. It's called a capacitor. Um, it is wired in series or parallel? Parallel. parallel. Uh, wired in parallel. In parallel to what? The points. Um, well, <coughs> talked a lot about this. When the points, when the points open, when the points open, there is a tendency for what to happen. What's that? Arcing, okay, so there's, there is, when the points, when points open, there is a tendency for the primary current to arc across the points. That wears them out um, and prevents the proper collapse of the primary field. Why does it uh, cause a primary field to not collapse? It prolongs the connection. The connection there you go. I wanted the field to, and the primary to collapse at, say, how many degrees? 10 degrees. 10. So 10 degrees is when the points start to open. And you, as you put your little buzz box, we call them, across the points and it's very sensitive it picks up just uh, you can't even see that they started open but electrically it already acknowledges that so we say okay 10 degrees bam they're they're open we get that sudden collapse but if it's going to arc well then it's going to go 11 12 13 14 15 eh, somewhere around there it's like yeah get around to doing it that's really bad so it delays everything and then throws your timing off and doesn't work well uh, so that's a bad thing so um, so points open there's a tendency with primary to current to arc um, and so the condenser helps with that. Of course, this wears out points. This wears out the points. And prevents, uh, and without the condenser, ah, we don't need to get into that. We just say 
wears out wears out the points. That's a bad thing. And we'll just go to four and say the capacitor or condenser aids in a rapid collapse of the field. Yeah, so why am I not writing in this area right here? Because this entire area right here is where the, the picture to picture goes. <laughs> so yeah, it's, it's right right in this area right now. What's that? How do I know it's there? Because Prince put some tape on my monitor and said, okay, there's your corner. Don't. <laughs> so, uh, so as long as I'm up there now so, whoops now it's all messed up now my my, my box is rolling up see yeah. <laughs> so i guess i just the picture's just going to roll away all right so where am i four all right last point five uh sometimes it's best not to know how the sausage is made <laughs> sometimes it's best not to know how the sausage is made it's a saying could you elaborate <laughs> Sausage is made out of floor sweepings and buttholes, and you don't want to know that that's what goes into the sausage, you see. <laughs> What's a butthole? Capacitor. <laughs> uh, capacitor also absorbs the induced voltage generated in the primary as its own field collapses. So capacitor also absorbs the induced voltage generated by the primary as its own field collapses. What is that called? Ooh, I even wrote that. Good for me. When when you have an inductor and its field collapses, and that causes a current within itself. Induction. Word right before it. Frequency. <laughs> you want to stand up here and show that? <laughs> so this is known as self induction. Well, the box rolled up, so I'm fine. The are new box, the new box is right here. <laughs> there is. Are we allowed to write the box? <laughs> <laughs> or does that mess you up too? Why, you, why are you gonna make my life hard? <laughs> I picked a bad day to stop sniffing glue, didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> is that what they're calling that day? It's an airplane reference. Would it, be, would it be more professional for me to walk off camera and drink my water? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, magnetic circuit, we got that down. Uh, primary contains what? Primary winding. Primary winding. Condenser, breaker points. Breaker points. Is that it? What's that? Okay. Other items. Other items, okay. Secondary circuit. You know what's fun? Now I can, if somebody just really gives me a bad time, I can have you come up here and sit right here on camera with me. <laughs> huh? <laughs> I can call your mom and ask her to watch that video. <laughs> I better not sit up there. I think I've talked to your mom. I won't say who, but I know somebody here I threatened to talk to their mom. That freaked you out, so. Secondary winding. All right, secondary circuit contains a secondary winding. Where is the secondary winding located? Okay, that's a good answer. Contained in the coil assembly. 
more specifically outside uh, right outside the primary. So we have the primary right mm -hmm. wrapped around the core and wrapped around the primary is going to be the secondary. So contained in the coil assembly um, has over 100 times the amount of turns amount of turns as the primary as over 100 times the amount of turns um, as in the primary so if the primary had 200 secondary must have about how many? 20,000. 20, All right. 20K. Hope your math is right. All right. Uh, so secondary winding. From the secondary winding, the high voltage is going to come out of what? How does it get out of the coil? The high tension tab right there. I got to show it to the camera so when Tim watches at home, he can see it. You want to come up here and see and see, see yourself on TV? <laughs> I can raise my hand to be I'm on the TV. <laughs> I'm, I'm on YouTube. We I'm on fame. I'm famous. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. High tension comes out of the high tension tab. I didn't write that. Oh well. And then it goes to the uh, distributor. I should say distributor rotor. Why did it, the distributor assembly? Well, Come on, Kevin, what are you doing? we'll go over distributor rotor. How about that? Distributor rotor, and I'll move stuff around here. Um, it is so it comes out of the high tension tab, goes to the distributor rotor gear. But how does it get from that high tension tab to this this rotor gear that's going around? Carbon brush. Carbon brush. Uh, distributor rotor, let me see, is gear driven? Is gear driven by a rotating magnet? By rotating. Rotating magnet. Make that one. Two. Contains the distributor gear electrode. Also called the finger. The finger. Which finger? I can't show you anymore. <laughs> and let's see. Uh, it usually contains a carbon brush. Carbon brush that receives. Oops. Receives uh, secondary voltage. How about from high tension tab? Yeah, I like that. That works. Mm -hmm. High tension tab. Then I'll back up one. But you don't know that. Two. Where am I now? Three. Three to the distributor, then to the distributor, and that is where the high tension leads attach from each cylinder. I suppose you guys have all told me that in your orals, and you say, "Well, here's the distributor here, this black part right here. This is how many cylinder? Four, Four cylinder, and the uh, leads attach here. How they how they attach? Uh, you just alligator clips. You know. Alligator clips. You just kind of clip them onto little springies in there." Nah, it's an assembly. It's assembly that already has all four of them mounted in there with the gasket and everything, and it presses in there, and then it's screwed down with four screws. It is, as I say, idiot resistant. Uh, I used to use the term idiot proof, but I had a student who, you know, quickly raised his hand. I said yes. He said, "Don't ever say idiot proof because they'll always make a better idiot." So. <laughs> Tim's like, "Yeah, they will." <laughs> I've seen them. Uh, so it only goes on one way. So if you can get it in and force it in, you'll find that you can't force the four screws in. 
So please don't force it in and kind of go, well, I got to drill some holes because the other two don't line up. So you did it wrong then. So distributor where high tension, where the high tension leads. What does the brush look like, the uh, carbon brush look like? What does it look like? Yeah. Makeup it looks yeah, like a makeup brush. Red. Yeah, may have mustache. Um, it, it looks like the end of a pencil eraser, but a little bit smaller, and it's black, and made out of carbon. So if you pull the pencil eraser out of something, it's about yay tall. And that's supposed to be every magneto. Yeah. You're yes. probably yeah. Have the, it's really You're still working one. <laughs> Are you missing one? I think so. Uh, could uh, be. Uh, where high tension leads. We'll figure it out. On How do you test that? I'll just put that. Uh, speaking of distributor gear, distributor finger, how many times does the distributor gear with its little finger go around to fire all four cylinders? Half the crankshaft speed? Once. Half the crankshaft speed? No. That's a four cylinder. Yeah. That's a four cylinder. Yeah. He was still right. Half the crankshaft speed. Right. Which means that it goes around how many times to fire all the cylinders? One. Okay, now I want you to I want you to realize, it. I'm going to warn you right now because I get people to do this crazy stuff. Okay, let's just say this is a S4LN20. It is. So what, what does that mean, S4LN? Four cylinders. Four cylinders. Okay, it's the S series magneto for left hand rotating um, from the drive in. Okay, so it turns left from this way. So I'll stand with you guys. It goes. Matt, counterclockwise. There's a clock. <laughs> All right, you can even see it on the camera too, so it can. So it goes yeah, left. Right. So it's going to go left. Okay. Yeah. Which now, Follow this, this is how all accessories are done. Which way does it rotate? Left hand. From which direction? From the. Drive in. Okay. If, okay, if it was a fuel pump and I said it was left hand rotating, it'd be from the. Drive in. Drive in. Okay, it works for everything. So left hand. I'm going to teach you a trick now. Okay, but. This is geared, so if this is turning left, that means that the rotor right now is turning to the right. Okay, now forget about that. I'm going to turn it around. It's a left-hand rotating magneto. Which way does this rotate? Also left if you're looking at it. If you're not looking at it, it turns right. This turns left, that turns right. Turn around, look at it, now it's turning left. All right, so if this one right here fires first, which is the next one to fire? What's the next one to fire? To the right. What's the next one to fire? Uh, no. You've not believed the crazy answers I get. Well, if it fired this one, then it's got to fire the three. It's going to skip this one and go to that one, then skip oh, that one and go to this one. Cylinder. Yeah, it's like, what is it, some sort of star pattern there? It's a little finger that just goes around. Spark, 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 spark. Right? It, can't, it doesn't do... If you tell me it jumps around, I'm going to ask it, well, how does it do that? And then you better be ready to explain it, because I want to hear this. What if they give you a damn good answer? Hasn't happened yet. I'll try. All right, so if it turns left here, it also turns left when you turn it around. You're looking at that, okay? So because next semester, year, somewhere, you're going to have to really know that. And that's, was that you, Matt? Yes, that was Matt. So you, you time it, and I'll say, okay, you've timed it to spark the number one cylinder. I'll say, what's going to, which, which cylinder is going to fire next, or which, which wire is going to fire next? And you would say it's going to be, well, you have two choices, this one or that one. Well, I guess you have three choices if you really don't know what you're doing. <laughs> which going to fire next? This, this one here? That one or that one? That particular one. Left hand. Okay, so this one right here, left hand. This one's going to fire next. Yes. So I'll say, great. If you're right, we'll take this one right here, and we will put it aside. And you're telling me this one already fired, this one's not, and this one's not. You take all of those, and you put them in your hand, and we're going to see if you're right. It's optional. But I think that's where you meant. I don't remember last year. We get it wrong. He had some sort of depression up until that point. He cured him. So a distributor, a rotor. Uh, okay, where the high tension leads attach, and then we can talk about the high tension lead. So uh, the high tension lead. Uh, there's a there's a lot to talk about with high tension leads, and I'll put that off for right now. Um, I'll just say usually a shielded lead. Lead. That's.
that's an A, L E A D, um, that distributes voltage to cylinder. Why do you say usually? Had to ask, didn't you? Yeah. Okay, so in most modern aircraft that have any sort of electrical or radio system, it's going to be a shielded lead. But if you take a small aircraft like a Piper Cub that doesn't have an electrical system, that one on the wall over there, uh, the, the Ronkas, they, they aren't. They're very much more like your automotive style, where it's just an automotive five, seven millimeter wire with an open clip, and the, and the spark plug looks just like kind of an automotive. It just They're bigger around with the same kind of top. And you just kind of clip them on the top. In fact, they're not even boots that shield it. They're wide open. And, but once you get into any kind of aircraft that has a radio system, then they're shielded. And that's why they, they're screwed on. And so we'll talk more about that as we get to there. Um, and then of course the spark plug comes next, which is a lot to talk about spark plugs. And we won't discuss those right now. So we'll put those off. But anyway, that's what is contained in the secondary circuit. Well, let's see here. Some of this seems redundant. And oh boy. Oh boy, did I write a lot. Let's decide how much you want to talk about here. All right, so the whole the operation of the whole thing. Did we not talk about the operation of the whole thing already? Yes. All right, so maybe Shirley we can. Did, Kevin. Uh, who's Shirley? <laughs> She's back. Operation. Um, all right, let's try and condense this so it doesn't take days upon days to discuss it. As the magnet is turned, lines of flux travel through the pole shoes into the coil core. I think we've already said that, correct? Flux does what? All right. Cuts across. Yeah, uh, cuts across. Well, the flux periodically reverses, but is constantly changing in <coughs> magnitude. Sounds like AC. A um, the changing magnitude of the floor, oh, my God. I'll just skip through some of this. All right, so we have the magnetic lines of flux are going around from the magnet to the pole shoes to the soft iron core, and that flux then is expanding and contracting it. Eh, it's kind of a fast rate, but not terribly fast. And so... What do we call this curve right here that I just created? Sine wave. Sine wave, but when we talk about magnetos, there was a specific. Uh, yeah, static, yeah. Uh, static flux curve. Static. So this is what it looks like without a coil involved. So again, once we add a coil, and because of Lenz law, as, as the uh, lines of flux want to diminish, we have a primary coil that is now involved and it holds out the lines of flux to about well, a little past 10 degrees past neutral. So at 10 degrees past neutral, we open up the breaker points. That causes a very rapid collapse in the, the flux and causes a high voltage, draw, high voltage in the primary. Uh, that high voltage in the primary was suddenly and rapidly killed off right here when the points open. So points open right here, points open, points open. And that causes a very sudden and rapid collapse of the primary field across the secondary, which then goes out and gives us our voltage to the secondary. So what kind of stuff did I write here? Yeah. It goes both ways, right? Because in your graph, you're It does. Okay. Yep. It doesn't have to reset from the top down. So, all right. Operation. I got seven. I got... My pages are all mixed up here. Why is that? Tell me, Ben. I don't know. I've got like a couple of page eights. I've got all kinds of stuff. Misprint. No, I think I just... Let's see where we go here. One, two, three. Well, this matches that. Uh, the flux periodic reverses is constantly changing. The channel, oh, there we go, changing uh, magnitude of flux. The voltage induced in a coil of wire is proportional to the rate of flux change. Yeah, I got really wordy here. Flux change. That's a flux change. Mm -hmm. Wow. 
I did cover all of this. You going to be okay if I don't write it down for you? Okay. Let's hope so. <laughs> I don't necessarily think that these things are on the test. Well, I'll check later. I'll check later. Right, let me ask you some questions then to see if we can see if we can fill in some blanks here. All right. There must be a change in flux to induce a voltage. True or false? True. All right. Um, the bigger the change, the bigger the voltage. voltage. The left hand rule, what's that about? I know there's several of them. <laughs> well, there are right hand rules too. I'll tell you what, we'll skip that one. Um, it's not important, I know. This is going to be some great stuff right there for YouTube. Can we maybe go over lens log a little bit? Well, all right, lens law. I actually have it right here in front of me, my notes for lens law. Remember lens law, the current that established creates its own field that is opposite to the applied voltage. That's kind of hard to... <laughs> okay, so we have a coil of wire, which we have several in there, the primary and the secondary. And when we induce voltage in the, we'll say the primary, we do, because the lines of flux are gonna go across, it's gonna induce this, this uh, voltage to happen in the primary. Follow me so far? Mm -hmm. Okay, and where did we get the voltage in the primary? From where? The magnetic, the magnetic lines of flux cut across it. Therefore, we have a magnet going across <coughs> wire, which induced a voltage and current flow. All right, so now we've got this current flow going through the wires. Well, what does that do? It it creates a magnetic field that helps the magnetic field from the magnet or hurts it. So to speak, it hurts it. It opposes it. So it sets up its own magnetic field that, hurt, that, that wants to fight it. And that's really where, okay, so I'm, I'm getting with this little drawing right here. As, as the static flux curve wants to die, we have a a magnetic field that is already built up within the primary. So as it's trying to die, that magnetic field is saying, hey, you can't go anywhere, you gotta stay. We like it here. We have it's built up its own magnetic field that opposes the dying off of the static flux curve. So it holds it out. Um, in the same way as it wants to build up, it opposes the build up. No, 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 we don't really wanna build up. But yet it will eventually. And the same is true when it collapses. Nah, we don't wanna collapse. So that's why we have to wait a little while. So it kind of comes out. And that, that also makes, makes it, helps it to work because you have this period between here and here. And as your book says, it creates this stress in the, in the, in the system. And what they're talking about, this stress system, is that the static curve is based upon the real position of the rotating magnet. And the real ro position of the rotating magnet, it's already gone past neutral and it's trying to go the other way now. But yet, we have inside the primary, it's still up here. It's still peaked out and going, I don't want to go anywhere. But its friend is all the way down here, right? They've kind of split up, gone their own ways. And well, it's like, like me and the dog, you know? It's like you're walking the dog, you're out, and, out hiking, and you're like, you're way over there. And the dog's like, ah, I got to get over there. So um, they, once they figured out there's this stress created, and Sky got to catch up. Well, at that point, we're gonna, it would start to fall off a little more slowly. But we open the points up, and it's got to get from this point to this point, and it's going to get there right now because there's nothing left. Boom, i got to catch up to where the, the rotor is because that's all there is. that help? So is that why we have the number of degrees for EGAP? Mm -hmm. Past neutral. Past neutral. Yeah, that's why we wait till past neutral. And as I've said before, the reason why we're not opening the points up here, think, well, why are we not opening up here? Because this is where the most lines of flux are. Well, that's true, but between here and here, there's almost no change. Between here and here, there's a change from here to here. 
There's a lot of change. We want change. It's all of hope and change. That's what we're looking for. So essentially, a drop off. Yes. Right. I don't know if I should go off camera to drink my water now or what. All right. So let's see. The current that is established creates its own field that is opposite to the applied field. Said that. When flux is building, counter EMF opposes the buildup. I said that. When flux is decreasing, the counter EMF opposes a drop. So that's what I said there. When the static flux curve is decreasing, the counter EMF opposes it. Well, now that you're here, don't leave. Uh, when a coil is added, the static flux curve, the AC curve, uh, looks like, well, what I just drew. Um, all right. And the breaker points are designed to open when the greatest change of flux is happening. And that, that's all about this, this right here. All right, and this is then, so the points open, and I say, okay, so they're opening 10 degrees past neutral. That is also known as the E gap. E gap. What does E stand for? Efficiency. Okay, efficiency gap. And it's defined as the number of degrees past neutral at which the points open. Um, we say 10 degrees, but who says it's 10 degrees? Well, that happens to be what it is for an S20 series. It says plus or minus 4 degrees, though. Yeah, we're, yeah, we don't do that. If it says 10, it's 10. It's 10. Uh, okay. And we talked about this. The amount of voltage in the secondary is dependent upon what? what is, uh, okay, so number one is how many turns in the coil, but then it's ultimately dependent upon... The spark plug gap. So it's a very little gap. Is that going to be a lot of voltage built up or not so much? Not so much. Not so much because it's, it's got a small gap so it can dissipate across that. Uh, let me see. Yeah, what I put here. Um, I wrote about that. Spark plug gap is only about 0.018. Air is an insulator. The more molecules in the gap, the wider the gap will be, electrically speaking. We talked about that yesterday. Um, we talked about why in the magneto tester we have a large gap and not the 0.018, correct? Compression. Right. Compressed right. I believe you have some questions in your Q&A about magneto rotor speed, do you not? Uh, probably. There's a lot of them. You haven't looked at them all yet. I went a little crazy and talked about the construction design. Um, the case is designed to, obviously, it's got to control the magnetic lines of flux. You don't want them leaking out all over the place because you get magnetic lines leaking all over the place. It starts messing with compasses and all kinds of other stuff. And that's not a good thing. Um, it's got to withstand heat and be durable. What's the case made out of? Aluminum. Aluminum. With Aluminum. what's the pole shoes made out of? Soft, Soft iron. iron. Soft iron. Rotating magnet. What's it made out of? Alnico, which stands for nickel and, and nickel and cobalt. There you go. And the distributor is made of uh, dielectric material. So does that mean it is it an insulator or a conductor? Insulator. Insulator. Okay. All right. Let's stop there for a break and then come back. <laughs>